Hey, welcome back to Two Stupid Guys for Red Sox. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And there was an article by CNBC that we're going to look at because it's fascinating. And it's talking about there could be a very radical move lower or higher, believe it or not. Um, we're going to look at it because apparently we are in a historically low volatility environment, even though we seem to be hitting all-time highs constantly. So. <laughs> All right. So here's the article. Now, one, this title is a lie, just to be very clear. Um, 2% sounds better than 2.05%. Um, we had a 2% yeah. sell off two months ago. It, I don't <laughs> This is. Wow. This that is. A, the yeah. Best cherry picking data I think I've seen in a long time. Yeah. No, it gets, it gets worse. There's a the worse one. It's there's multiple graphs in here. Um, now I get what they're trying to do. Um, do I think you're scummy? Yes, I think this is a rant and the problem with journalism today. But yeah, that title's a lie. Um, anyways, it's 377 days. The spy has gone without a 2.05 percent sell-off. Okay, 2.05. Now. Here is the last time that we got close to 350 days. This was 2017 to 2018. Okay. Long time, right? Yeah. That's well, not too bad. Random ass number. So I don't really yeah. know how that you but sure. I agree. Cherry picked to hell. Um, now, I will say this is the spy, not the cues. If your immediate okay. reaction was, that's bullshit. We have like one every 30 days. You're correct. We do. <laughs> it's just, yeah. that's the spy. Every time now, Elon talks. <laughs> yeah. Here's more cherry pick data. Ready? We also have uh, 377 days, whatever, um, since, oh, without a 2.15% or larger gain. 2.15. Yeah, that's, I mean, the 2.15 rule, I mean, I've, I've heard of that all my life. <laughs> It's clearly, it's huge, yeah. right? That means that there was multiple, like 2.08, 2.1. The guy's like, ah, oh, shut up. All right, 2.15. We got to go 2.15. All right. I get it. Whatever. It's, I get what they're trying to do. I just, just be honest in the freaking title. Um, <laughs> now, we're going to look at some graphs. That's kind of interesting. But here is probably the most interesting aspect of this. So you're familiar with the VIX, right? Yep. Okay, so on Friday, it traded around 13 near historic low levels, all right? It's unclear how long we're going to be in this low volatility period. In 2017, the S&P 500 recorded just eight daily moves of more than 1%, which is, that's kind of wild. 1%, that's a much better statistic than 2.15 or 2.05. Yeah, you um, sure it's not 1.08? It's actually... No, because it's by the same <laughs> author, so <laughs> he might have lied too. Um, but the following year, however, volatility came back in the market, and you know the VIX went to above 50. So there's two conclusions we can draw from this. A, is it worth it to play the VIX because we're at historic lows? Is it worth it to go into the VIX for a long-term option and be like, all right, maybe try to capture volatility? Or B, is it worth it? to do an iron condor, which is more of a oh. thing. Mm. Probably not. Um, or is it worth it to short or do a long-term option either direction? All right. Which, by the way, I got like a lot of shit for doing my NVIDIA short last week. Yeah. It's working great. I don't, I got, I was up 23%. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, not granted, there's a decent chance I'm going to sell at break even because I have okay. a rule. If I hit 20% and it goes back down to break even, I have to sell. I refuse to take a loss. That could be a bad rule. It could be a good rule, but it's a good trade. I understand yeah. where people were mad. Um, here's the spy for 377 days. Now, there are multiple giant white and red bars here, which is where you can see they definitely cherry pick the data. Can you see mm -hmm. my mouse? Yeah. I yeah, can. this is like 2.03%. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't count. That's greater than 2. That's 2.05 is the cutoff, my man. Um, yeah. I just zoomed in on them. 
it's I don't know I don't know why they did that. Um, here's the VIX. Okay, so this is same time frame going back to a little more than June of last year. You can see we are hitting the low end of what we've had in quite a long time. Is it worth it to play the VIX, Benny? Ooh, I don't know, man. It's when it when it's elevated, I get playing it towards the downside. When it's when it's low like this, I feel like it's going to be low for so long that you, you know, it, what's the trade? I don't know. I, I agree. I would much rather short it when it's insanely high than go long because the problem with these, I if you just look up like the most common vehicles because you can't do the VIX directly. You have to do like ETFs, whatever. But because they're all leveraged, you get decay over time. So this is the exact same time frame. Oh, uh, I think it's short a month, but same time frame. It slowly decreases. This is UVXY. This is VX, VX, VIXY. There are other vehicles that don't have this. I'm not familiar with them, so I don't want to speak on something I don't know. But mm -hmm. to me, it would be a much better trade after we have those 2.05 or 2.15 jumps um, than to short it than to go long on it now. It's just too scary because it could just keep leaking. Yeah, yeah, that makes good sense. I mean, historically, we've, we're entering a period of the year where it's typically that you see, you know, the old adage about less volatility in the summer and things yeah. like that. Big moves happen early in the year, and then, like, as we move into the fall, we see it a little more commonly. Although we do have earnings season <laughs> coming up. We do have earnings season. NVIDIA did become the world's most viable company for a little bit, for like a second, again. Um, I do think because the Qs, we've talked about this multiple times, I believe it's 47% are in eight stocks and the SPY it's 30. If we have just a minor bad day for Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA, it'll hit 205 or two, whatever the guy Perfect. wants. Um, I do think it'll be fairly telling because we ended with NVIDIA on a doji below the 9 EMA. So I think it either happens like this next week or not for a while. Well, I know that's a, that's a bold claim. Yeah. Interesting. All right. I don't really know if I have a strong opinion on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're going to move higher or lower. Is it going to break to the upside by 2.15% before it drops 2.05. Let's just do twos. This I hate this guy. I don't know why I did this. <laughs> are we, we going to have a move higher two or a move lower by 2% first? Which one? Yeah. Uh, which one is more likely to happen? I say lower, but maybe I'm just being a pessimist today. I would have said lower for the last six months. So, and I'm wrong. Yeah. yeah. Just ask me like know. tomorrow, get a totally different opinion. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, let us know what you think in the state of journalism today. Oh, boy.